To mask or not to mask? That's the question. Today on LaserNug. Welcome back. You folks know I'm only a couple of weeks in now with this Thunder Laser Bolt, and I've been watching a lot of videos on engraving or cutting different types of wood. I've been focused since I got the laser on trying to perfect my settings on Baltic birch, and I could use a little help in the comments. It just seems to me that unless you want kind of a rustic or a western look to your output, or you've got a really intricate design, I'm just not quite sure why you wouldn't mask the wood every time. You folks will probably remember several videos ago when I started working with this Baltic birch, it's a three mil piece. I began cutting just a very simple design just to test the engraved score in the cut against this three mil. And as I was getting closer to, I think, what are much better settings than I started with, I just found that there's still a little bit of scoring or coloring sometimes. And so I thought I'd give the mask a try. And I did. And it certainly came out a lot different. Take a look. One of these pieces was masked and one was not. It's pretty clear I masked this whole piece and I did not mask this one. They were both cut, engraved and scored with the exact same settings. And I noticed that on the masked piece, my engraving is much lighter than the piece that I did not mask. In other words, I've got a darker engraving on the right hand side than I do on the left. However, I have absolutely no scoring whatsoever or discoloration on this piece whatsoever. And I know that in the absence of masking the piece, you can get cleaner for wood to try to take off some of that discoloration. You can grab some sanding blocks and you can do it that way. Although I understand you have to be really careful because the veneer on this craft wood is very, very thin and it doesn't take much to take the veneer off. But if you can get your hands on some mask, it just seems to do a much cleaner job. And I'm just not sure why you wouldn't always mask your piece, notwithstanding those two scenarios. So I thought, maybe I'll try it again. So I used my logo and I made it a little bit bigger. Same three mil Baltic birch. So in this case, I used the exact same settings again for lines per inch or DPI, speed and power, with one exception. My logo has an additional vector in it, so I just thought I'd test it out. So on the left side of the logo, I increased the power to be different than the right side. The mask piece came out nice and clean, no scorching, no marks, no overburn for lack of better words. But again, it just seems to make sense to me to mask it. So today I thought I'd put something with a little more complex graphic in there. One that you've seen me use on my coaster. And I'm going to try to burn that on the Baltic birch. I'm going to cut it without a mask and then I'm going to mask a piece and cut it again. And we'll take a look at the results. With the trees and the cabin in there, there's a lot of tiny little pieces. So I want to see how that turns out. Let's start up Lightburn, get it set up and get it on the laser. I'm going to open up the cabin and the trees design that I did for the slate coasters last week. Right here. Let me just make that a little bigger for my old eyes. First thing I want to do here is grab this design. I'm going to go up to the top here and I'm going to click on the little single silhouette. That's to ungroup all of those layers. I'm going to take what was my tool layer here. I'm going to highlight it. That's the orangey red circle. And I'm going to click on T1. I'm going to come down to the bottom left and I'm going to give that a green. Next, I'd like to go over here to the left side toolbar. I'm going to click on the circle command. I'm going to hold down the shift key I'm going to drag out a big circle. I'm going to come back over to the left side toolbar, click on the select tool. I want to grab this new circle I made and I'm going to give it a cut layer. So I'm going to come down to the left. I'm going to click on the red. You'll see it's turned red. And now I have a new line command here. It has air because I'm going to need the air assist, but I need to adjust my settings here. I've got speed at 20 millimeters per second. I'm going to change my power to 53% and my min to 53% because I'm still playing with my settings and I'm trying to find just the right one and I'm getting pretty close. Okay, we're good. So that's my cut layer. I've got my air assist on. I'm 20, 53 and 53. 
I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to grab this circle and I want to put it over my existing design. Now I'm going to click on my text. I'm going to go over to my blue layer and I need to change these settings. They are fill, but I need to change the settings to 400 millimeters per second. And I need that at, I'm going to leave it at 30% power. And I'm going to do that for all of them. Uh, I am at 400 lines per inch. I think I'm good. I could probably just do 300 for the purpose of this test. Okay. And that will give me the right setting for all of my blue parts or my blue text. My cabin is my black layer. So I'm going in to my black layer to the right and I'm going to set that at the same settings. 400 speed and 30 engrave, 30, 300 lines per inch. And I believe we are a fill, we are, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna drag up. I'm gonna go up to the top toolbar and I'm gonna click the group command. Currently my user origin, if you come down here to the right, is sitting in the center. I wanna move my origin to the top left and you'll see that the little green square jumped up here to the top left of the design. Okay, I've got cut selected graphics. It's all selected. I'm good to go. So I'm gonna send this to the bolt. You can see my design is in the window and ready to go. Now I'm gonna place my Baltic birch onto the honeycomb. And I'm gonna hold it down with some lay flat pins because it still has a little bit of a warp in it. Not much, but a little. Now let's move our laser. Good. Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, we'll set our origin. Let's frame our piece. Okay, so now I know that my pins are need to be moved. Okay, let's try that again. Let's frame it. Looks good. And now let's autofocus. And now, let's start our piece. Wow. You know what? That is a really clean cut and engrave, even without the mask. I'm really pleased with the performance. I think I still have to change a few more settings, but I'm almost there. And when I grab some settings that I'm really happy with, I'll do a quick shot video just to let you know what the settings were. So you can try them at home. Beautiful detail. And not a lot of scorching at all, barely any, except around the edges a bit. But the engraving came out really nice and even. Let's give this a mask and do it again. And then we'll take a look at the difference. My understanding is that it's critical that you remove all the air pockets from between the mask and the wood. What I've been told is that if you leave air pockets, the laser can flare up or flame up if it hits that air pocket. So you want to do a good job of making sure this mask is flush to the wood. If you haven't picked up one of these pick tools, these are priceless. I 
I think perhaps I have answered my own question here today. Boy, oh boy. You can see the point of that laser is very fine. Tiny, tiny, thin pieces of mask that stayed where they were supposed to. But the laser was able to cut so finely around them. Well, <laughs> I can see that's a little time consuming. Let's take a look at them together. So here on the right is where we masked. I probably didn't have to tell you. It is clean as a whistle. There is not a scorch mark, burn mark. There is no residue from either the masking tape or the laser. Nice and even all the way through the engrave and clear detail right through every roof tile. Your piece here on the left is the one that we did not mask. It's still an excellent engraving and very high quality. The only carry-on is here along the edges where you can see there's a little bit of scorching and that just might be my settings, which I'm still working on. But the engrave itself is beautiful, very detailed, and even throughout the whole piece. And there's barely any residue anywhere that I can find on this piece. Just the odd little place where there might be a tiny little bit of overburn, so to speak. So there are two things I've learned for sure on this exercise. <laughs> there's a little bit more work to be done, especially if you've got a very detailed engraving or design when you mask. It comes off clean. The second thing is, it tends to mute the depth of your engraving or the color of your engraving. In other words, you'll see this one that was not masked is a nice dark, in fact, I love that color engrave. That was at 30%. The mask tends to lighten it. So I guess when I'm masking, I'm gonna need to make sure that I increase that power level to make sure that I get that nice, beautiful depth that I like. Well, once again, I appreciate you sticking around with me and learning along with me. I hope it was helpful today. What would help is if you have the time or you have any advice or suggestions as it pertains to when you mask and when you don't mask, I'd greatly appreciate it in the comments. That said, I hope you have a great week and I hope I see you in the next one. Cheers.